that's dealing with these slides. Now, again, even though these theorems are written, uh, don't let don't let the wordiness of the the theorem uh, prevent you from understanding the concept. So the first part here says um, the limits of polynomial functions. Uh, if p is a polynomial uh, and c is a real number, then it's basically just an example of direct substitution. So just plug it in. Uh, it should work out great for you. Uh, next, of course, it says uh, a rational function. Again, just kind of doing the same thing. Whenever you have a rational function, just plug the value in. So we'll actually do the numerator and also the denominator. So we'll plug the c value into the numerator and also plug it into the denominator. Sorry about that little thing there. Uh, it says let n uh, be a positive number, so this time the limit's involving a radical. Uh, it says the, the following limit is valid for all c if n is odd, and is valid for all c if it's greater than zero for the even ones. That's basically just saying you can't take the root of a negative number because it's imaginary, therefore if you have an even index, you can't use this direct substitution. So uh, if you plug it in, um, as long as n is odd, you're just going to use direct substitution. If n is even, as long as c is positive, you're going to use direct substitution also. Uh, composite function, basically a little tricky, but not too bad. It says f and g are functions. Let the limit of g of x if it's l, and uh, we're going to then take the l the limit of the first function and plug it into the second function. So hopefully what you would think would happen when you're dealing with composite functions, we'll look at a couple examples. So here we go. So first things first, uh, obviously this is a, a nice little uh, rational function. So what we can do is we can just use direct substitution. So we're finding the limit of our rational function as x approaches 1. Uh, when you plug that in, you're just going to replace 1 with all the x's. Then we're just going to simplify it. Um, now what it said, of course, was P of C and then R of C. I think were the letters, maybe. But that's basically what we're doing. When you add those together, you're going to get four halves, which of course is equal to two. And that's our wonderful limit. Uh, on the next one, a little bit tricky this time. Even though we can use direct substitution with this, uh, sometimes it's good to understand the concepts of what we're doing. So we could actually write this as a composite function. So we can say, uh, well, that's really some function we're plugging into another, so we're decomposing our function. Well, what you can do is you can say, okay, it's the square root of x squared plus 4. Well, what if we say that g of x, the inside function, is that x squared plus 4, and f of x is the square root of x. And then with that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit of our inside function, which is g of x, so the limit of x squared plus 4 as x approaches 0, well, to do that, we're just going to use direct substitution, so just plug in 0 in for x, and it's pretty easy to come up with the value of 4. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this value, and we're now going to plug that into our f of x. So we're going to take that value of 4, which is the limit of our g of x as x approaches 0, plug it in, and as you can see, we can get a value of 4 or the square root of 4, which will give us 2. So that's going to be our limit. And like we said, we could have used uh, direct substitution at the very beginning, plugged it in, and gotten the exact same result.